Now, I'm going to be a dick here to Ronan Farrow for a little bit. So, Ronan has been an abysmal ratings failure on MSNBC, something I predicted from day one, and his problem is everything. I told you I was going to be a dick. <laughs> I will not disappoint. I mean, he's super awkward. Now, that's nothing in and of itself, because I'm awkward, and I embrace my awkwardness, but he's awkward in a way that <laughs> is unembraceable even for him. And it's like he tries to sound like he's cooler than he is by making pop culture references and, like, he reminds me of, you know how pe some people tell bad jokes and, like, they wait for a reaction from you? <laughs> and then I said to him, <laughs> that's not a waffle! They wait for your reaction and you gotta force it. But since there's pressure that they're looking at you, you're like, ha, 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 so funny. Uh. That's what, when I watch Ronan Farrow's show, that's what I feel. It's like he makes the pop culture references and then looks like, I'm hip, I'm with it. Duck, 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 duck. And he's just not very good at policy substance. He's not well-versed in the policy substance. So today, I see a story on Mediaite. It's a tiny clip, and I think that this clip highlights everything that's wrong with his show in like a minute. It is 1 p.m. on the East Coast, 10 a.m. over on the West. Welcome to this program we have managed to get on the air, despite key staffers taking personal days for mysterious reasons definitely 100% unrelated to Super Bowl hangovers. The rest of you, here's what you need to know right now. The president announced a nearly $4 trillion budget proposal for 2016 with increased spending for homeland security and defense, as well as education and infrastructure. And this is interesting, especially a focus in his rollout on tech infrastructure. Basically... You get the money, and you get the money, you all get the money! Just like a certain Chicago-based talk show host. You get a car! You get a car! You get a car! You get a car! Everybody get the car! I am so impressed they actually got that in the top of the show. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so first of all, the Super Bowl hangover reference. Now, I know I'm nitpicking, and in all seriousness, I'm secretly a curmudgeonly old man who hates life, and I'm like, ah, damn kids, get off my lawn. So I get it. I'm the, I'm the dick in this conversation. I'm admitting that up front. But why is he doing the Super Bowl hangover reference? Because he's trying to sound cool. Are you, me and my staff are with it. They watch the Super Bowl, and they drink alcohol. They drink beverages that get you drunk, so they were had a hangover and some people are missing. <laughs> Do you guys like me yet? I know, Ronan, you're trying to fit in. Just, come on, man. You gotta... Just do your job. Your job is to care about the policy, care about the substance, actually give a shit about politics and the issues that affect the American people, but he's just... You know, he's trying to play the role of being a TV host, and that never works when you just try to fill the role of X, because it comes across as disingenuous and weird and awkward. And then the comparison to uh, of Obama's budget to Oprah, I mean, that's just because he's corny, right? And again, I would if he was just corny, I would defend him, because I'm corny as fuck. Everybody knows that. But it's not just that. It's everything put together. The package is just gross. And the reason why, what pushed me over the edge to cover this is that there was also a substantive failure there too because you just did a right-wing talking point without even realizing it. You heard him. He's, he's like, Obama's budget is a big spender. And then you go to Oprah talking about free cars. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car. That feeds perfectly into the bullshit narrative from the right wing of... Oh, he's giving away Obama phones, and he's giving you know, increased welfare to blacks, and he's the food stamp president, and you know how these big spending liberals are. He's a socialist in disguise, and... Look, I know no conservatives are watching his show, but it's just the principle of the thing, man. I mean, this clip, in a nutshell, is why Ronan Farrow's ratings are horrible, and his show's not gonna last, and why MSNBC is failing miserably. 
They just, look, the idea of putting on Ronan Farrow, oh, get that famous person's uh, son or something, and we'll just put him on, and people will love to hear what he has to say. Like, even the boardroom conversation must have been ridiculous. Uh, and nobody in the history of his show has been at school or at a movie or out shopping, and they go, you know, honey, I have to rush home. I need to hear what uh, Mia Farrow's son thinks on f marginal tax rates. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And what MSNBC needs to do is, dude, get like an entertaining version of Chris Hayes on there. You know, Rachel Maddow does a decent job. Chris Hayes is a really, really smart guy, so I don't want this to come across the wrong way. Get a guy like him, but less wonky. And get a guy who tells the truth. I mean, you got rid of the best thing you ever had when you had Jank Uger because he was speaking truth to power too much. But the thing is, the only way you're going to get real ratings is to have smart people speaking truth to power. That's the only way you're going to do well and you're going to have a shot at, you know, permanently staying in second place or beating Fox News eventually. I mean, that should be a goal in your mind, but these guys have all given it up because they're just like, I don't know, Fox is unbeatable. They just get so, so much higher numbers, we can't fix anything. Uh, you can't do it because you're, you don't have the right recipe. Your recipe is pathetic. You put on somebody who doesn't know anything uh, doesn't know much, doesn't know much policy substance, or if he does, he doesn't show it. You put on somebody like Ronan Farrow, who doesn't really dive into the specifics and isn't entertaining, and he makes points where he doesn't even realize he's making a conservative point like he did with the Oprah clip. I know, man, I'm going too far with it because he's... I mean, he was just fucking around, right? He was just starting the show off and having a good time. But, like, you have to be aware... Of, if you're going to host a show, a national TV show... You have to be aware of what you're doing, the comparisons you're making, and the clips that you show. Because that, and it's not true either. I mean, his budget, uh, what the fuck, do we not pay taxes? So what is the government supposed to do? Take our money and do nothing with it? You make a budget, that's what you do. We pay taxes, they make budgets, they spend money, and he's cut the deficit tremendously. I mean, that's the thing, you say, oh, free this, free that, free this, and it's like, no, Obama's actually been more fiscally responsible than his conservative counterparts. And to be fair to uh, Ronan Farrow, he did go on to say that, he did go on to even play a clip of Obama saying that. So, at least in that respect, I'll spare him my wrath, even though I'm giving it to him nonstop here. But, look, it just, it drives me crazy, man. It drives me crazy, because when I look at MSNBC, I see potential. They've embraced the idea of, will be the Democratic counterpart. But what they need to do is embrace the idea of not being the Democratic counterpart to Fox News, but being the liberal counterpart. There's a difference. Democratic means suck up to the Democratic Party. Democratic means that's what we do, is we defend them, we do their talking points. Liberal means actually give a shit about the policy substance and about the ideology and about the specifics and not about the party, right? But you need to embrace... Uh, being the liberal channel, being the objective channel, right? And being entertaining. They failed on all those counts, or Ronan Farrow is a perfect example of that.